This daily grind, I need one wine. Welcome to the Grind It Podcast. You know, life can be such a grind at times, and so we're here sharing God's Word with you to encourage you to keep grinding and to not give up. Every day of my life is such a grind. It's time to grind. So here's the host of the Grind It Podcast, the old school skateboarder himself, Randall Tucker. Welcome to the Grinded Podcast. Today we continue Acts chapter 16. And in the last podcast, as we started Acts chapter 16, I gave props to the women for uh, everything that they do in the church because uh, Paul tells us that that was that Paul. I'm sorry. Paul tells us that Timothy received his faith from his grandmother Lois and from his mother. Eunice and so I just wanted to give props to all the hard work that the women do for the work of the kingdom of God and Today we're going to uh, pick up where we left off and that was uh, Timothy being circumcised and now that he's all healed up It'll be Paul Silas and Timothy who's going to travel around the area from different cities uh, sharing the gospel encouraging believers to stay the course And they also shared the message from the apostles and the elders in Jerusalem that talks about that the Gentiles don't have to be circumcised anymore, but what they need to to do is abstain from these things that had to do with the, the worship of false gods. And so Luke writes in verse 5, he says, So the churches were strengthened in their faith and grew larger every day. Now think about that. The church grew larger every day. Back when I was preaching full time, just sometimes I would get so discouraged because I, along with many other people, work literally our butts off to try and and get our church growing. Um, We would do many things in the community and we would get involved with many people's lives and and share Jesus with people and invite them to come and visit, you know, our church building and and worship with us. And and it was just week after week after week, it would be just crickets. It you know, it was the same faces. Not that I didn't appreciate the people who did come, but to a preacher and to to somebody who gives their life to uh, the gospel and sharing their faith with others, just you're pouring yourself out to so many people and not to get anything in return for them to never show up to a service it was literally draining and if you're if you've ever been involved in church work you know exactly what i'm talking about but the minute one of those people that you've been sharing your faith with uh for so long uh the minute they step foot into that building and and it, it's just like a drug shot up into your veins it, it just uh, it, it just you know it just inspires you and peps you up and encourage you greatly and it just motivates to keep going and if like i said if you've been involved in church work especially if you're a preacher you know exactly what i'm talking about but uh someone pointed this out to me and i want to share it uh with with you listeners he he said then I want to share two things with you about about the way I was feeling, because this is one of the days I was down and out because we're we're not seeing the church grow like we wanted to, and and you know visitors are not showing up like we wanted to, and uh, you know I, was, I guess I was just having a pity party that day. And he said, "I'm gonna share this with you." He said, "The prophet Jeremiah preached his whole life and never had one convert. Nobody listened, not one convert." And then he said, think about the church back then in, in the New Testament. It was new, it was fresh, and it was right there. And he said, we're 2,000 years into the church church's existence, and the church is worldwide. The world is so much bigger now than it was then, and we have all these means of getting out the gospel and so many people have heard the gospel he said but think about this randy he said somewhere every day someone is being saved so it's literally just like it was in the book of acts the church is growing on a daily 
basis. Now, it may not be happening at the church that you attend, but it's happening somewhere in the Lord's church around the world. People are being converted to Jesus every day, just like they were in the book of Acts. So let me encourage you with these same thoughts. If you aren't seeing the results that you want, keep sowing the seed. We plant, we water, and it is up to God to bring the increase. So just make sure that you're doing your part. I'm going to make sure that I'm continue, continue, continuing to do my part. And you know what? God will do his part because that's what he does and he promises to do. He, he desires that all men will repent and give their lives to him. So why would he not do his part? So just keep on keeping on and doing what you do and be encouraged that somewhere every day that somebody's given their life to Jesus Christ and the church is growing just like it did in the book of Acts. So let's move on. In verse 10, Luke writes about some places that Paul and Silas traveled to uh, uh, such as this. He says they were headed to Asia, but the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes along and says, nope, you're, you're not, I'm not allowing you to go into Asia Minor just yet. So they went into the regions of Phrygia and Galatia instead. Um, if you Google a map of, of Paul's second missionary journey, you can see the path that they took, and, it, and it's really cool, and how the Holy Spirit guided them the whole time as they traveled. And so then they, they, head, uh, they headed to the borders of Mysia, and they started to head north to Bithynia. But again, the Holy Spirit tells Paul, he says, nope, you're not going there, not ready yet. And so they go on through Mysia to the seaport of Troas. But before we go any further, I'm going to point, it, point this out, that we as Christ followers today in 2021, we have the same Holy Spirit that Paul and Silas and Timothy, all the apostles, all the Christians that we read about throughout the book of Acts, we have the same Holy Spirit as they did. The same Holy Spirit that was guiding Paul as they traveled through this area is the same Holy Spirit that will guide you and me. Matter of fact, He does guide you and me. The problem is, are we listening? Are we listening? Are we obeying? Are we heeding to the roadblocks that the Holy Spirit sets up? Hey, don't go there. Go here instead. Or do we just crash on through the roadblocks and do what we want to do because we think this is the right way to go. We think this is what God wants us to do and we just ignore the Holy Spirit. The results will be far greater the results will be better if we listen and we are, are obedient to God's will. So Paul and, and Silas, they arrive at Troas, and that very night, Paul has a vision. And Luke says in verse 9 and 10, he says, A vision appeared to Paul in the night, and a man of Macedonia was standing and pleading with him, saying, Come over here to Macedonia and help us. And he says, when we had seen the vision, we immediately sought to leave for Macedonia, including that God, or concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. And I want to say, duh, you think? You know, so a couple of things I want to point out to you here, a few things. First thing is, Paul has a vision. Paul has a vision. How many times have you said, God, just show me. If you just show me what you want me to do, I'll do it. I mean, wouldn't it be much easier if we just could have a vision and it be an angel or it be like Paul had the man from Macedonia saying, hey, come over here because you got them traveling through the area. They want to go here and the Holy Spirit saying, no, you're not going here, but you need to go here. And then all of a sudden, you, you know, you lay down at night to rest, but you have a vision and the, you have a man say, hey, come over here. Well, we say, I, I'm just as guilty as anybody. We say, you know, if God would just show up and show me 
exactly what he wants me to do, I'll do it. I will go. And then we just hear crickets. God doesn't show up. No angel shows up. There's no man appearing in a vision saying, come over here to Macedonia and help us. Nothing like that. It's just nothing. It's crickets. So does that mean that God doesn't hear us? No. Does it mean that God doesn't care? No, He cares. He hears us and He cares. Then, then why doesn't God just give us a vision like He did Paul? Or why doesn't he, he send an angel like He did in the Old Testament to make our path clear? Because, because God has given us all that we need. It's something that those people like Paul and Silas and Timothy and the apostles and, and Barnabas and John Mark, it's something that those guys did not have. And that would be his word, God's word, the Bible. When we read the word of God, when we read our Bibles, I guarantee you, I promise you, God will speak to you. God will give you clear direction you will hear i promise you i guarantee it you will hear the voice of god speaking to you but only when you get in his word that's why it's so important it's absolutely crucial that we as god's people be students of the word and i'm so thankful that you're listening to this podcast because this is what i'm trying to do i'm trying to break down the word of god so that you can understand it and, and so you can share it with others so that they can hear it and they can understand it and that they can hear the voice of god speaking to them through his word and god will give you clear direction i guarantee you I promise you it will happen if you get into the Word of God and begin to read it. We'll carry on with Acts chapter 16 when we come back from break. Be right back. This is Ryan Kirst. I'm the student pastor at Partnership Christian Church, and I want to invite you and your family to worship with us this coming Sunday. Check us out on Facebook or YouTube for service times and directions. Thanks for listening to the Grind It Podcast. Keep grinding. So Paul and Silas, they arrive at, 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 and Luke, they arrive at Troas after being, you know, they're, wanting, they're traveling around to, to tell people about Jesus and share the gospel message with others. And they're traveling through these areas and they want to go here, but the Holy Spirit says no. And so they continue to, to, to go on this journey and they want to go here and the Holy Spirit says no. So they just continue on. And they arrive at Troas and, and, and Paul has this vision of, of this man saying, hey, come over here to Macedonia. And we say things like, well, if God would just show me what he wants me to do, if he'd just send an angel, just give me a vision, I would just do whatever he tells me to do. And, and, and so it just I'm just saying it doesn't necessarily happen like that. I'm not saying it can happen like that, but it's never happened to me. And as far as I know, it's never happened to anybody else. And if they say, you know, they heard God's voice, you know, audibly or, you know, just let me just give you a, 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 a warning. Stay away from those people. So Paul has this vision. And the second thing that I want to share with you from this is after seeing the vision and seeing the man pleading for Paul to come to Macedonia to help them, Paul and Silas, they leave immediately they get the vision they immediately go into action hey come over here to Macedonia and help us there was no pro pro procrastination there, there is no wait I, I, I'm tired from this journey I need to rest Be, th there's none of that Paul recognized what the will of God was for them to do and that was to go on to Macedonia and to take the gospel to the people there. And he immediately leaves Troas. He grabs the first boat that he could get on that is heading uh, to, to Mac toward Macedonia. And they get on that boat and they sail there. Now, if someone knows that they aren't a Christian 
And they know that the will of God is for them to give their life to Jesus Christ and to become a Christian. Why do they wait? Why do they just put it off? Why do they procrastinate? Because the Bible says today, not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, not next year, but today is the day of salvation. In fact, we're not even promised tomorrow. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of country music. I, I like a little bit of it, and it has to be the old country. But Garth Brooks came out with a song many years ago that says, If tomorrow never comes. And, and we're never promised tomorrow. So the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off. Be saved today. Give your life to Jesus today while you still have breath in your lungs and a heartbeat in your chest and you have the ability to do so why wait because eternity is one heartbeat away one breath away step into eternity forever and never having a second opportunity to be saved if we are saved if we are sons and daughters of christ then we know that the will of God is to sow seed, to tell people about Jesus, to share with them the gospel message, the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus so that other people can have what we have, the hope that we have, the opportunity to be saved. Why do we wait? Why do we hold on to our seed and keep it in our pockets? Why are we not sowing the seed? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11 through 15, Paul writes this. He says, Because we understand our fear fearful responsibility to the Lord, we work hard to persuade others. We work hard to persuade others. God knows that we are sincere, and I hope you know this too. We are commending ourselves to you again. No, are we commending ourselves to you again? No. We are giving you a reason to be proud of us so you can answer those who brag about having spectac a spectacular ministry rather than having a sincere heart. If it seems that we are crazy, it is to bring glory to God. And if we are in our right minds, it is for your benefit. Either way, Christ's love controls us or compels us Christ's love controls us since we believe that Christ died for all we also believe that we have all died to our old life that old man is dead he's gone I don't live that way anymore I have a new life I live for Jesus now the old man's passed away I'm a new creature in Christ creation in Christ he died for everyone so that those who receive his, his new life will no longer live for themselves instead they will live for Christ who died and was raised for them. So Paul says that we are controlled by Christ's love. He guides us. We're motivated by what Jesus did for us on the cross. He displayed his great love, his agape love, his unconditional love for us on what he did on the cross. He gave his life so willingly so that we could have life because our sin separated us from God. Jesus knew he had to be the ultimate price, that he had to be the sacrifice that paid the penalty for our sins. And he did so willingly and he dies on a cross. He's put in a tomb for three days and on the third day he comes out victorious saying, okay, boys and girls, you can have the victory through me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father. No man can come to heaven except they come through me. I have the victory. You can have the victory. And so if we know that Jesus died for us, why do we wait about giving our lives to Jesus? If we know that he is the only way to heaven, why do we put Jesus off? And if we know that there are people that are lost people that we know, our friends, our family, relatives, co-workers, whoever, we know that they do not know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Why do we wait about going to those people and sharing with them our faith? The message of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus, giving them the opportunity to say yes or no to Jesus. 
We should be motivated by the love that Christ has shown us. That's what Paul says motivates him. And he says, we work hard. What about you? What about me? Do we work hard for the kingdom? Are we motivated by Christ's love for us? If that doesn't motivate us to share the good news, nothing will. If that doesn't motivate a person to give their life to Jesus, the death, burial, and the resurrection, nothing will. Nothing will. And so the third thing that I want to share before we move on is that Luke writes, he says, We left Troas for Macedonia. Uh, it's here in Troas that Luke joins Paul and Silas. Now, I'm so grateful that Paul listened to the Holy Spirit. Now, get this. Just go with me here for a second. I'm so grateful that Paul listened to the Holy Spirit when, when, when he was trying to go into Bithynia, and the Holy Spirit says, nope, not there. Just keep going. And he tried to go into Asia Minor, and the Holy Spirit says, nope, not there. Just keep going. And he goes on to Troas, and he has his vision, and he goes to Macedonia, and Luke says, we left for Troas. It is, it is in Troas where Paul joins up with Luke and the reason why I say that I'm so grateful that Luke joins Paul and Silas that Paul listened to the Holy Spirit because if he had went to Bithynia if he had went into Asia Minor after the Holy Spirit said no he would have been out of God's will first of all but there's a possibility that he would have never met Luke and we wouldn't have the book of Luke the gospel of Luke nor would we have the book of Acts and not only that, we may have missed out on Paul's letters, and he wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. But since Paul was, was obedient, we have a first-hand view of what happened. We have an eyewitness that was there, and he pinned it all down that even though we're 2,000 years removed from this time, we can still read about it and be encouraged by it because we know it's firsthand. It's not just hearsay. It was written by an eyewitness who actually saw these events take place and he pinned it down so we could have it today and be encouraged by it. Just imagine, I mean just imagine what God would do through you and me if we would be like Paul and be obedient to his calling. Even though we want to go into Bithynia, even though we want to go into Asia Minor, God doesn't want us to go there. I know there's people there who need Jesus. I know there's people down here who need the gospel. I know there's sick people here who need to be healed. I know there's people here who, who would be encouraged if we went into this area. But the Holy Spirit says no. The Holy Spirit says to keep going. And the vision is telling us to come over here, so we're not going to go over there. If we would just put ourselves to the side, just for a moment, and listen. Man, I love noise. I sleep with noise. I turn my iPad on. I turn worship music on. And, and, and I, I go to sleep listening to noise. I keep a headphone in my ear all day long while I'm at work and I'll listen to music all day long. I love noise. But you know what noise is? It's a distraction. And, and, and when we're distracted, we're not listening to God. And I'm so thankful that Paul, even though he could have been distracted, especially when people are chasing him from city to city, he still listened and was obedient to God. And if we would just be still, and be quiet for a moment and just listen. We would hear the voice of God. We would hear the Holy Spirit in our hearts telling us the will of God. It will be a clear direction. And, and if we would listen and if we would be obedient to His calling, man, what things God would do through you and me. It's as simple as this. 
what, what talent do you have or talents? What can you do? What do you enjoy doing? What, what is your hobbies? And you, you fill that list in yourself. You know yourself and you know what you love and you know what you enjoy doing. How about this? Take your hobbies. Take your talents. Use your abilities for the gospel's sake. Take what you know and use that as a means to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with other people. It's really that simple. Listen and be obedient. That's what Paul did. And because Paul listened and he was obedient, and he didn't go into Bithynia, he didn't go into Asia Minor, he just kept the course, and he listened to God and, and to the, the voice of the Holy Spirit. And when that, that, that Macedonian call came in that vision, that man said, come over here to help us, they immediately got the first ship that they could that was sailing toward Macedonia. They, abort, they got on board that ship and they sailed to Macedonia. And because Paul was obedient, we have his letters today. We have Luke's writings today. We have all these great examples that encourage us to keep grinding, to stay in the faith, that to give our lives to Jesus Christ. And it gives us the hope that they have, that they had, that someday we too, when we take our last breath on this earth, when our heart beats for the last time, that we will be in the presence of God. And we have that to look forward to, all because of Paul's obedience. I just want to encourage you today as we end this podcast, listen and be obedient. Take your talents and use them for the glory of God and watch what God will do through you. God bless you. Keep grinding. Thank you for joining us today on the Grind It Podcast. Please feel free to share this podcast with your friends and your family so that they too can be encouraged by the power of God's Word. If you have any comments or questions, just email them to thegrinditpodcast at gmail.com. Remember, keep grinding and God bless you.